started my own small stint in NFTs. Over time, evolved into something which I realized has a lot of potential, and then you know I can actually reach a lot of audience. I think of AI as an extension of your human brain. First company decides it all for you. Like if you have a great first company, like you have a very good foundation to work out of. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Humans of Pesto. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Manis, who is a Pesto alum. Uh, today is going to be all about learning more about his inspiring journey and uh, understanding what he's up to in the Web two and the Web three world. Welcome on board, Manis. Thank you for having me here. All right, Manis. To kick things off, uh, could you take us through your journey as a developer and uh, what you are doing currently? Yeah. So, like. I uh, graduated from Thapur, started my journey uh, with JP Morgan Chase as a full stack developer. So I joined in, and then you know I got to know. Okay, I have to work in all different types of technologies, most of which names I haven't heard. Like I worked in Scala, no idea, no clue, like what that is, right? But I had really great mentors there, and you know people were so busy yet so open to help you out, you know. No matter how many times you will go to them and you will ask them questions, they will patiently sit down and you know help you solve it. Like if not, you know if they are short on time, they will guide you at least. Okay, you know how is it that you can approach it? And uh, JP Morgan got me very interested in the fintech space. I wanted to now get familiar with finance. That's when I decided to go for masters at ASIC uh, in France. I had a great time there, but also on the side, I started my own small stint in NFTs, you know, and which over time evolved into something which I realized has a lot of potential, and then you know I can actually reach a lot of audience. So right. I figured out, okay, I can build a subscription product for you know transactions, like easy transactions. It came to a point where I couldn't, you know, manage the two things head to head. Like I was left with a choice: okay, do I continue or do I just drop it out? You know, uh, decided to choose the latter, drop it out because you know I can come back and uh, do my education later. Uh, so spent two years in NFT Stonkers, built, uh, experimented with a lot of products, built one product which was really successful. Uh, that turned really big. We captured most of the market. We turned profitable. Uh, but even if you have a decent product, right? I reached a stage where I realized, okay, you know, this is it. This is how big the market is for my product. It's not getting big. So, what are the le- next logical steps for me? So, I figured that Web three startups in the very early stage are the best fit for me because I can help turn their dream into an actual running product, right? Uh, that's when I met Sid from Bazirex. Like he just wrapped up his work at Bazirex and was looking for uh, building another, you know, startup called Tegro. I was the third member in the team, and then you know, uh, we worked on six months, pulled things through, and then we finally, you know, got an exchange ready where people can come in and trade. And that was the most complex product that I ever built in my life, right? Like even to this uh, till date. uh in terms of tech right uh, because i had to nail down everything like okay what like that was the first time i was thinking of latency like i never ever thought of latency in my tech journey before and one thing i thought was, would add really a lot of values if i can upgrade myself in terms of blockchain even further that's when i found pesto and pesto got me very familiar with you know a uh, very comfortable with blockchain and a simple powerful example is before pesto uh, i would look at ei different eips you know and i would just reject them like just skip <laughs> them past and read the heading and that's it because you know i didn't never wanted to get deep into tech because it was so uncomfortable and post pesto that was a piece of cake so yeah like that's how powerful you know the pesto course was for me and once i went through that pesto not only helped me upgrade myself but they also started helping me you know connect with all the different startups that are coming up what they are doing and then that's when i uh, met with you know uh, zero x past team and then you know they were looking for a founding member who can build something like for web3 which is very akin to login systems and web2 and i found their idea very interesting and pesto helped me connect with them and then you know over a couple of conversations i decided to okay let's transition into zero x pass 
and uh, you know let's help them build a like great product which can onboard the next million and billion users to web3 so yeah like that's here i am i've seen the web3 world up close and i've seen that community plays a very important role in web3 right your community becomes your first set of users they give you the feedback so how do you feel community played an important part in taking your product from no users to your first 100 users community building is something that you know first thing is you have to listen to what they are really saying right people will have different emotions right? they won't uh, come to you straight forward and say okay you know we are uh, not happy with your product because it's this and this instead of that they will come to others and they will say okay you know i hate this product so they will be very incomplete right so what you have to really do at this point is okay you know reach out further to them and uh, really see what they meant you know and keep asking curious questions so i i i think that that is something that really worked for me so you have to have community building activities okay so there will be two kind of community members one like you know which are passive like they are seeing all the updates they are appreciating it but you know they are not really vocal about it right. and then the second people right who like actively get involved uh, people at the end they will see you th- see through you so you have to be your original self you have to tell them okay this is something you would do this is something you won't do and you have to you know constantly uh, prove them that you know whatever you are promising them you are delivering them and that's how over time they build trust and that keeps the community intact so how did you transition from a web 2 to a web 3 role so from an outsider right when you are just on web 2 web3 looks very scary because you know you he, you hear all the technical terms you hear blockchain you hear evm and uh, then you wonder okay this is something very out of my realm right when uh, you know things got real I, like there was no other option for me than actually go and design a smart contract uh, that is when i started learning and what i actually figured out it's pretty similar to web2 world like the only thing different is okay uh, there's a different language but you know isn't that always the case every 2 3 years we come up with a new language right so yeah that was the first step and then once you get into blockchain you understand and you know then it's a compounding effect okay you go and you're trying to solve a problem you go read a bunch of stuff and everything slowly breaks down and then you know everything starts making sense to you uh, what i would say is it's like it's the, the complexity of the terms that keep us on bay but rather like the system in itself is not really complex right it's something which are we are already familiar with we can say it's just a different version of it right so you know as a web3 developer now what skill set do you believe you know aspiring developers or people who are planning to enter the web3 world from a technical perspective should aim to reach where you are today i feel we are in a very dynamic world so people have to be open to different stacks because i believe how we are going to evolve in the next few years is like the stacks will keep changing very frequently like if they have been frequent earlier it will be more even more faster now so be very open to changing your stack right um, i think like something like pesto really makes sense because you know they help you structure it in a way that you know you don't remain on the sidelines like just out of skill so uh, courses like pesto make sense and just have a like small idea in your head that you know it's not really that different so if you believe that part the rest becomes easy because you know your mind you open up your mind to all the stuff that is coming to you uh, so that would be my advice that yeah. also brings me uh, to the whole uh, concept of remote working which is uh, very prevalent in the web3 side of the world so um, you know how did you transition uh, from a in office to a completely remote environment and how has that worked for you i believe irrespective of the place obviously right work from home comes with a set of flexibilities that you can't get at office uh, if you're living in bangalore you save a bunch of time like just traveling <laughs> Okay. and if you look at it practically right without any like uh, mixed up opinions uh you need to make sure that you know you are able to segregate and like draw clear boundaries between you know what's your work time you know what's your work schedule or uh, what's your work routine and if you're able to segregate that and you know uh, be very clear in at home that okay this is my work routine and this is my personal routine and not mix up both i think it creates a balance in your life 
and also that you are equally productive or sometimes even more productive right in office uh one thing that i do miss is you get to engage with people you know right. i draw energy from that you know i every two one and a half hour to hour i need to just go walk and talk to somebody uh that's not something that happens in uh like remote work but you can figure out the ways right you can have a evening time where you can just go and chill out with your friends productivity wise i can you can self manage it well as long as you drop clear boundaries shifting gears a little bit i wanted to understand a little bit of your take on web3 right you started in web3 with nfts so yeah. did you had an inclination towards the nft space or um, i mean how did you get into this whole uh, nft world uh nfts i think have both utilities that people sell uh, sell them on right they have utility in terms of holding value like you know uh, i want to buy it because you know it makes me feel something maybe you know it's a really great piece of art or it makes me feel that okay you know i can show off uh, that i have a higher class status so nfts work that way and even nfts work as a utility right there are so many utilities you can attach to it uh but i think uh, with every bull market you just overhype the same things right uh, the actual real industry real crux takes time to build uh, my idea was more towards the utility side where i you know what i wanted to do was i was in fintech space and a lot of web3 games were coming up so my idea was okay i will create a automated system where you know i would uh, have nfts which will serve as tokens and then on the front side of it will be a contract which will based on set rules decide okay you know what are the different projects uh, we like nft holders will collectively go into and you know play and you know buy tokens of and so it was a automated project of that side where everybody who has nft represents a ownership of that and it it was all automatic process so that was the use case uh, that i came up with nfts right and uh, it became uh, like it drove me a lot of attention in the first few weeks and that is how i was able to turn into a manual you know stint on the side to actually a fully automated process uh, but yeah like that was a idea which you know gained a lot of attraction initially but uh, you couldn't uh, it, it wasn't a sustainable idea why because you know uh web3 games uh, even at this like we are in 2023 like 2 years from uh, then right web3 games are, have still not figured out the economic piece of the puzzle like right. okay uh, everybody says that uh, web3 games are the future but the economics of it is still you know untested and we still need to figure out so any game you will look this survive like hardly for 3 to 3 uh, to 4 months so yeah like that was something that wasn't sustainable right we did had a great time in 2021 like all of the nft holders had but after that it became a sort of a dull uh, product right so that's how i started yep the tech scenario in india is brimming as well as globally so what's what's that one technology that you feel hasn't fully uh, emerged itself and has great potential out there ai if like you use it smartly and like i i think next 10 20 years it will completely tra- transform how humans think because you know you will have almost all possibilities in your hand like there is nothing out of reach for you yeah i think it's a world full of possibilities which is unexplored do you personally follow any communities or tech newsletter that you would suggest um, that people could use to keep up themselves with all the news and latest happenings in tech for me it's more targeted learning right so i would uh, see okay what i want to learn and then i would go watch tech talks on the, those topics then that that gives me a start and then i just go down the rabbit hole over time right so that's how i approach uh, it yeah right i think uh, it it's been such a fun chat so far and i wanted to you know uh, add a little bit of fun element to it uh, okay. about a quick rapid fire to get to know you better Okay yeah I have never tried it but you sure. should <laughs> All right uh let's get started so what's your favorite programming language Scala If you could build any tech product from scratch what would it be It will be probably a fintech product which makes uh, you know investing really uh, simple and intuitive What would be that one tech related skill you wish you had mastered sooner in your career I feel AI like how to build a train AI model Also if you could work with any tech company in the world which one would it be 
I would work with Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah, I mean three Web three. Um, I would I would say tokens. Uh, that you probably have in your portfolio, if you can share that. Yeah, I have. I actually have only four. Uh, so I, I am more concentrated in terms of my investment philosophy. But Matic is one because these guys are hustlers, right? Like yes. you could see them at almost everything, and then you know they are building and shipping as fast as they can. As they can. Uh, so I strongly believe in them. And then ETH is the second. Uh, why? Because the amount of research work that is going into the ETH chain and like it's higher standards than even the like all the other research work, right? So that's why I'm very bullish. Third is Vax chain because you know a lot of things that were familiar to me in Web two, Vax chain is the closest relative to that. Fourth would be uh, like it's a game called Illuvium. Okay. Uh, not sound reasoning, but I I feel that among all the games, this game has the best chance because you know people have actually put a lot of work into it, and then you know this has if if I have to take a bet across the game, this has the best chance, even though you know the puzzle is not figured out yet. Yeah. Finally, do you yeah. have any advice or words of encouragement for aspiring developers who are just starting their journey? These people are gonna enter in a very different world in the next four five years. Right. So, uh, keep up to date with the things that are happening. Uh, you need not keep uh, like you know you know need not focus on everything. You just pick what uh, one or two areas resonate best with you. It can be AI, it can be deep tech, you know, it can be even let's say quantum computing, or it can be as simple as you know simple product problem solving. Like it need not be even you know some complex terms or technologies that not not make sense to you, but you know. Figure out what resonates best with you, and then you know just keep up to date for that, and keep going in that stream. Right, I think that's such a powerful message. And again, yeah, uh, thank you so much, Manas, for joining us today and uh, sharing this incredible journey with us today. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having me here. It was a great chat. That's a wrap for this episode of Humans of Pesto. And to all our listeners, stay tuned for more such inspiring stories. Until next time, keep learning and keep growing.